All right, folks, welcome. My name is Mr. E, and welcome to Math Without the Mystery. All right, today we're going to be talking big picture now. This is big picture. This is geometry, similar triangles. Okay, a little. we're going to get a little bit into trigonometry, uh, tangent, uh, if you know what that is, um, but nothing to be scared about. Definitely ratios also, so that falls under the algebra or pre-algebra even. Okay, so you got to know ratios, cross multiplication, similar triangles. Those are the big picture concepts. All right, small picture. Let us begin. I'm going to share my screen. Um, share the PowerPoint. All right, begin the slideshow. And here we go. Meet me outside. That's what Thales said. If it sounds like a challenge, it is. Meet me outside at the Great Pyramid. At the time, the Great Pyramid was the greatest achievement known to man. And it still is one of the greatest achievements known to man. All right, it's still standing 3,000 years from now, and we still don't know fully how it was built. And uh, so when Thales said, hey, meet me at the Great Pyramid, he was saying, I'm going to show you. I'm going to pick the biggest guy in the yard and defeat him. All right, to put it in perspective. All right, you are here. You're in front of this great pyramid. Do you feel small? You should. It was designed to be awe-inspiring. When it had the little... Uh, coating that you can see at the top of one of these pyramids here is shine like gold it was a beacon it was huge how huge it looks like little bricks there but look on the picture on the right hand side way at the bottom where you see people walking and you could see the bricks are the size of a car let's say compared to people so how do you even lift those bricks and if I even gave you bricks, gave you superpowers where you could lift these bricks, let's say they're just like Lego blocks to you. Could you put them at a precise angle like that? What angle did they choose anyways? Okay, what do you see from this pyramid by looking at it geometrically? What shapes do you see? Hopefully you see triangles. Okay, how many triangles? Well, we can see two and we know it goes all the way around. So it's four. So that means its base must be what shape? There's four triangles that go all around. Its base is a square base, okay? Because you could have a pyramid that is a uh, base of a triangle, so it would only have three sides. But a four-sided pyramid, it's a square base. That didn't dawn on me till, till I saw that. So you deal with these 3D objects. 3D math is a whole other thing, and you're talking about prisms, uh so it can <laughs> to build a real life pyramid gets more complicated and remember it was mazes inside and who knows gold treasure all right so thales stood in front of it just like that little guy let's say on the picture or if you will the guy in front of the camel and he asked a question what is the height the true height of the great pyramid Apparently, no one knew the answer. Okay, apparently, the Egyptians kept their building, you know, light <laughs> secret. Today, we would know this information, right? But uh, just by looking at a building, maybe you can count of stories, or we don't keep a secret. But apparently, nobody knew the true height of the Great Pyramid. So he posed it as a question. He's like, if I can solve that, if I can one-up your greatest achievement. That means I know how you built it. And I can build it myself. All right, um, so that's the question before you today. You're going to solve that mathematically. What is the height? What is the true height of the Great Pyramid? You will need to know some facts. I am going to give you all the tools you need to solve the problem. You will match wits with Thales. Get ready to take the L. All right, we will see if you are as clever as Thales. At the end, you can't beat Thales. You can only prove you're as clever as him. All right, to see if you could solve the problem that he solved. All right, I'm gonna give you the same facts that he had in his disposal. 
A, the sun was shining. B, similar triangles have different heights and widths, but the same angles, at least two. The base of the pyramid, he could walk it, he could measure it, right? We could, we could walk one side of the pyramid, it's 230 meters long. Of course, since it's a square pyramid, we know all the sides were 230 because that's what a square pyramid is. Okay, so now we know the perimeter and all that if you want. He knew his height, okay? The average human is about, adult, is about two meters high. That's about six feet. Um, so just a rough estimate. Okay, they, they measure stuff in meters. He was a shorty, the Staley's guy. He was 1.44 meters tall. And he always carried a staff with him. As a matter of fact, I feel like getting my staff right now. All right, just a cool visual. This is my Staley staff. It is about as high as me, so maybe he was a bit taller. You measured your shadow yesterday at 5 p.m. and your shadow was 1.22 meters long. Anyone ever looked at a shadow before, your own shadow before? Sometimes it's way longer than you, sometimes it's way shorter. There's songs about that. Sometimes your shadow's your only friend. Sometimes people are afraid of their own shadow. Okay, The Rock talks about that, being afraid of his own shadow. He was a wolf and he became the toughest guy. All right, and the shadow of the pyramid at that exact time yesterday was 12.03 meters tall. Okay, again, some huge hints there. Some of your brains are going there. Oh, how can I use this? Okay, when you're thinking, you're learning. All right, now I'm doing you a huge favor by giving you only the facts you need. So I'm taking away everything else that you're sweating, all the other things that you would. I might be in your way. You got some Egyptian guy looking at you like, what are you going to do? Uh, we're better than you. You know, and all the feelings that you may have and, and you're worried, will this work or what? Okay. And really, here's the big question, big picture question. How do you handle big or even impossible challenges? How do you see the impossible? Have, and it says there, math equals possible, impossible plus possible. Have you ever stared at a math problem and you're like, no way, I cannot do this. Too big, too hard. And then after somebody explains it and kind of shows you the way, it becomes possible. Okay, Life is the same thing. All our problems that we face are basically, not all of them, because some of them are real simple. But some of the problems we'll face will seem like mountains, will seem like great pyramids, impossible to solve, cannot be done. Um, and yet we will see you have all the tools you need right now. You have all the tools you need. How do you measure small picture? How do you measure a big pyramid and you can't climb or access? Okay, let's go back to it. You can't go to the top and drop a thing because it's closed. Okay. Uh, sure. You could send a slave up there and you could measure the angled wall. But if you know anything at all, you know, an angled wall is not going to be the same height as a straight up and down wall, right? An angled wall to reach the same height has to actually be longer. If you've studied anything in triangles or you got a ladder, got a real long ladder, when you put it next to the wall, you lose about a foot or two. All right, so imagine that scaled up. Okay, where are we? I noticed four things that Thales did that we could apply to all life, all problems. Number one, he shrank the problem down to size, made manageable size, made his big problem manageable. Okay, I'm sure we can all relate to that. Have you ever stood in front of a copier and you make copies? You can make copies of the same size paper, but there's a button on that copier that says enlarge two times, 10 times. And if you have something really small, you just hit that button and it enlarges it and it prints it, but 10 times bigger. Or you could reduce 10 times smaller. How does a copier do that? Okay, really, it's simple. It just says every pixel there or every dot or however you want to look at it, every line, double it in size. Let's say you wanted to make it twice as big. So every pixel that was one, you know, one pixel big <laughs> became two pixel big. Just 
just got enlarged. And if you do that to everything at the same time, you've made the picture bigger without changing the picture. You follow? You change it, but you don't change it. Okay, dailies also use prior knowledge. From this moment on, I'd like to create a button inside you that you just say, activate prior knowledge. And you start to think, what have I learned? What have I learned? Okay and use that to your advantage. Number three, he thought outside the box. Okay, he saw what others did not see. Okay, uh, do you, are you capable of seeing the invisible? Talk about that in math a lot. There's an invisible multiplication sign sometimes. There's information hidden there that you must see, that others could plainly not see. And use what you have around you. Sometimes the answers are here in plain sight. I have a poster, it has actually all the formulas you need in math. Okay, that literally is a sum of knowledge right there. You might just walk past that poster and think, a eh, bunch of gibberish, bunch of gibberish. That's the sum of wisdom of a thousand years right there. Okay, and you just passed it by like it's nothing. All right, so use what you have around your resources. Those are at least what I noticed from Thales um, problem solving. What other things can you notice? I would love to hear from you, but I can't because this is a video recording. Say it out loud anyways. What other things you notice from, oh, we haven't gotten to the solution. Oh, let's get there. 